Hello there, everybody. Adam Cleary from 442 here. And just Chelsea again. They have been beaten 1-0 by a very determined Middlesbrough side in the Carabao Cup. And while, yes, it is only half time in the fixture. And full disclosure, I do think they'll probably turn it around. The fact they lost that game in such underwhelming circumstances should have alarm bells ringing. Don't know how to give that one really sort of neat little title, though. Oh, well, sure, I'll figure it out. All right, so first off, this morning, I've seen a lot of stuff saying these Chelsea players just simply aren't good enough. But let's just, just have a look here. Yeah, they are. Now, I know they're beset by injuries at the minute, but that is still a back four with strength, experience, pace, got a lot of good qualities. They've still got, on paper, the best double pivot in the entire Premier League. Like, Caicedo and Fernandez should be dominating every single game they're in. It's a really talented front three, and I know Conor Gallagher gets a lot of stick, but that is the perfect player to have in that position because he can drop in in the build-up. He can help when they need help there. He can go out to either flank. He likes to get into the box. He's got a goal in him. He's like a really functional, really useful number 10. But the problem Chelsea had was that in Middlesbrough's lineup, they were bringing their two major Achilles heels. First of all, the ability to form a compact low block with these players, but more importantly, just a willingness and a determination to work really hard off the ball. And if you've got both of those things, as we've seen this season you've got a really good chance of beating Chelsea. And just to sort of prove it's not really to do with ability, this isn't even Middlesbrough's final form. They're missing something like 14 first-team players. They lost two during the course of the game. They just knew what they were doing. So even though they weren't at their best and they probably weren't offering as much of a threat as they would have liked, they were still organised. <laughs> if there's one thing Chelsea simply hate... So the team's just being organised. Actually, just really quick, before we get bogged down in everything that went wrong here, I want to give the proper, correct amount of credit to this Middlesbrough team, because this is so far being reported this morning as a catastrophe for Chelsea, and obviously it is. They didn't play very well, but Borough, I don't want them getting lost in this. I thought they were excellent. Dale Fry, who we'll talk more about in a minute, I thought was just absolutely imperious at the back. And Dan Barlazer, who I once saw play in an FA Cup game for Newcastle and thought, ooh, he looks like a tidy player. He was magnificent. In fact, if you grabbed a space alien from the sky and said, watch Barlazer and watch Fernandez, and then tell me which of the two is the £100 million World Cup winner and which is the 900k bargain from Rotherham, they would say... <laughs> and that would be fair enough. And also, just huge credit to Michael Carrick as well, because there's already a Middlesbrough side down to the bare bones. And when they lost two of these players in the first, like, what... 20 minutes he didn't just alter the personnel but he managed to alter the shape okay so Chelsea now first off they did have their chances they probably should have scored they probably should have won the game but crucially they did not and if this was the first kind of defeat they'd had like this this season you just write it off as a bad day at the office and say oh well we'll do them in the return leg but this happens time and time again to this group of players why? Well, in total, Chelsea had 18 chances. I've overlaid them onto the pitch here so you can see them. And the first thing you'll notice is absolutely loads of them are from miles and miles away. As they get frustrated, they struggle to break teams down. Someone just has a shot. Like these five that are absolutely miles out, they're all from a different player. Like it's Fernandez, Caicedo, Palmer, Gallagher, and Dezarzi. So it's a team-wide problem. It's not just that one person really fancies themselves from distance. But nonetheless, there is a little cluster right in front of the goal in that area where you always feel like you should score from. So let's look at all of those. So first up, in the 29th minute, we have this chance from Levi Cole. Well, it's a header with two players around him and it's back to goal. Not a good chance. Next up is the really, really bad Cole Palmer miss. And yes, he should absolutely bury this. But this is not a good chance Chelsea created. It's from a long-range effort that the goalkeeper spills. Which is incredibly fortunate it even falls to him in the first place. So, a good chance, but not them making a good chance. After that, we've got this from Mandueke in the 52nd minute. A ball just sort of clipped into the box. He does get his head to it, but there's two players between him and the goal. You're never going to score that. A couple of minutes later, we've got this from Conor Gallagher, who starts with his back to goal and kind of tries to wriggle around the defender and swings a leg at it. It rolls past the post. Again, not a good chance. And then finally, there is this, which actually took me a while to find in the footage. This is Dezazi having an attempt at goal from within the six-yard box. But as you can see... It's just a bouncing ball that he's reaching out for, and I think he just toe-pokes it gently towards the net. It is also not 
a good chance. And then, of course, I do all of these, the other really good Cole Palmer chance that he should score. But where did that come from? It's not them tearing the championship side open. It's not them having more ideas than Borough can live with. Someone's brain just falls out and they give it to him. So, bottom line here, they had loads of chances, but they didn't have any good chances. So... Why not? Well, the easiest way I can think of explaining it is that this is genuinely a really good team, but it is a team so reliant on individual moments of brilliance and skill to make things happen that when game states stop that happening because the opposition are really well organized or they're denying you space, they have no idea how to break teams down as a team. So in the second half, Middlesbrough have lost two players and they've got a lead to defend. They go into this 4-4-2 low block that just denies all of the space in the central part of the pitch. And what this is supposed to force teams to do is to effectively just horseshoe until the clock runs out. So you go wide because that's where the space is, but there's nothing you can really do with it from this position. So you go back slowly, bit by bit, all the way around to the other side. And it goes, it goes again. Now, there are two ways you can unpick a low block, right? The first is the 90s solution, whereby you just had two centre forwards that were usually quite big. And when the ball did go out wide, you could just hang it up in there. It didn't even have to be a good cross, but they would compete for it and maybe you'd get a knockdown. But Chelsea obviously don't have Andy Carroll and Duncan Ferguson up front. They had Cole Palmer and Raheem Sterling. So you've got to do it the modern way, which is through movement. While you're passing it round, your players in your front line, you have to move the opposition around to create create pockets of space where other players can then get in. So just a small example of how that might work. You've got a central midfielder who's come over here and a fullback here and your wide attacker, he is sort of touch tight with one of the fullbacks, but maybe he drifts inside looking like he's going to receive the pass here, takes the defender with him and the fullback uses that opportunity to get in. They play a ball around the corner or over the top and then you're in. And while yes, that requires ability to pull off, the most important thing is it requires understanding and it requires coordination and Chelsea just do not have that. Here is just a frankly staggering example from the second half, okay? Chelsea are doing the horseshoe thing. They're trying to find the space. They're trying to make something happen. But look at the movement being offered by all those players in the front line. There is absolutely nothing. And then in the end, completely short of ideas, they just stick a ball into a box, which Middlesbrough quite happily gobble up. An unbelievable 32 crosses Chelsea put into the box last night against Middlesbrough. That is a cross like every three minutes. And would you like to know how many of those crosses were successful? Four. That is not a viable route to goal in this game. And yet, it was all they had every three minutes. And the thing is, this happens to all the big clubs. Teams will try and low block them and force them to do this. It's not just Chelsea who find themselves in this position, but the difference with Chelsea is that they find themselves in this position for the entirety of their matches. It seems to be the state they're permanently in. Like here it is in the first half when Middlesbrough aren't even sitting particularly deep. They're still sort of pressing them up to the halfway line and they just can't find a way through the middle. They're passing it from side to side. And it's so stupid and so frustrating to watch this because my brothers in Christ you have Moises Caicedo. Like, this is the thing I cannot get my head around with this Chelsea team. Like, if you were watching this happen time and time again, and either they hadn't signed Caicedo or he was just injured, you'd say, well, that's the solution. They need a player like that who can receive the first pass out of defense, who can break that press and can get them up through the middle. Like, the whole reason you get a player like that, the whole reason he looked so good at Brighton, was because when the opposition begin to press you, when you convince them to push up a little bit and commit a little bit further forward, you've got that player in Caicedo who can receive the ball with his back to the opposition in a tight area with them all around him and then play out. The amount of times last season Caicedo found himself in this exact perilous position for Brighton and would get turned, beat a man and have them away just a lost count of it. His entire job is to be in positions where the opposition think they can get him or where they think they've got him marked. You get the ball into him and he evades them. He beats that press. He gets you up the pitch. Like if Chelsea have got the ball at the back here somewhere and you are the red team, you're probably looking at this situation thinking, aha, there's nothing they can do here. We've got a really good handle on them. But what used to happen at Brighton was that ball would get fired into him. These three would smell blood and close in and either the other midfielder would have slipped his marker, the pass would go straight in there or one of the fullbacks would have been away and the pass would go in there or he'd just do one of them and that's, they're up. They're away, they're flying up the pitch, they've got overloads, he's killed you. Now let's just go back to that clip in the first half, all right, and watch Caicedo. Does he at any point in this move look like a player in any danger 
of receiving the ball. All Thiago Silva needs to do here is just play the ball to Caicedo. And I know there is a man in the way, but look at the gap that he's got to put that ball through. We can just put it slightly to the left to Caicedo. It's, it's Thiago Silva. You can just put a little bit of outside on it and get it around him. And if that goes into Caicedo there, then either he drops off a first-time ball for Fernandez here, who is away into all this space, or when this lad here smells blood and decides to try and go onto him, he can just get around him. He's a much better player. And if they do that... They're in! They're in through the middle! The promised land! Instead, they just keep knocking it around from left to right, and Middlesbrough sit off and sit off, and the space disappears. And here is the exact same thing again in the second half. Like, the way you're supposed to defend against Caicedo is to drop your line of press behind him so there's nobody for him to beat. Middlesbrough have taken the bait. They've pushed up. He's between their press, and still... They don't find him with the ball. Like, I know technically he's surrounded by Middlesbrough players here, but the whole reason they spent that much money on him is because he's supposed to be good enough that that isn't a problem for him. That's his whole thing. Accurate, incisive pass, which if you're in a team like Chelsea, you should be able to do with your eyes closed. Takes all three of these players out of the equation, and then Caicedo's ability probably takes the next one as well. And honestly, this first pass out of defence is killing this Chelsea team. Like, I had a look at the average positions, right, for everybody last night. I'll overlay them here. How on earth is Enzo Fernandez receiving the ball in deeper positions than Caicedo is? I know Fernandez gets a little bit of criticism for his chance creation, both in terms of the quality of it and the quantity of it, but that's never going to change if he's having to drop all the way back there to receive the ball. And you just take all that disorganization and that lack of direction and lack of an idea and you put it up against a Middlesbrough side who, despite being on the bones of their arse in terms of personnel, are organized, are well drilled and are determined, then you're gonna lose. All they were looking to do was invite Chelsea on, stay disciplined and try and hit them in the space they invariably left and they did. They did it in the first half, and they scored this goal from it, and they could have done it again. They were really good last night, Middlesbrough. Like, I was so, so impressed with them. But they weren't good in any way that sort of marks Michael Carrick out as some kind of tactical genius. They just did the things that Chelsea don't like and did them really well. And... There's no reason they can't do that at Stamford Bridge either. But yes, whatever side of this you were on, I do hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, you can subscribe to us here on 442. We are within spitting distance of hitting half a million subs. So that would be so, so awesome for us. And subscribing genuinely really does help us grow the channel. So thank you if you have already done that. And thank you even more so if you choose to do it because of this video. Anyway, you can get me on Twitter at Adam Cleary, C-L-E. Oh, why? The 442 socials are in the corner of the thing there. Can I reach the mag? Yes, I can. That is still in all good retailers and the bad ones too. But until next time, uh, me, Adam, Chelsea, bad, Middlesbrough, good, possibly may even win the next game. See you soon. Bye.